Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this special Photoshop Elements text project we're going to give wood a carved look. Now, of course, you could just do a standard text to a standard bevel and emboss and then maybe put some wood grain to it, but it, it's not going to be really nice and you won't have a whole lot of control over exactly how the effect works. So I'll be showing you how you can have far more control over your text and be able to give it a real nice clean look. We'll start off with just taking a quick look at the different elements in this particular project. Of course there's a black background. We have our wood based text right down here. Let me just hide everything else for a second. Let me see if it'll hide for me. There we go. So there's the basic text and on this one I just used a nice wood looking typeface called Playbill Regular. If you don't happen to have that you can find that easily enough online. Just do a search for Playbill font on Google and you'll, you'll come across downloads for that. So basic typeface right there. We then use that typeface and give it a standard bevel. Now there are two kinds of bevels. I'll talk about that a little later on. We'll just be using a soft bevel on this one. We then place wood grain into that and I'll show you how we create that wood grain. We have some highlights which I'll be showing you how to use that a little bit later on. And then we create the flat front surface of that wood and place a special wood grain into there as well. So a few steps to get this nice look and again it's very controllable because we have different layers where we can come in and adjust things. So let's start off by making a new file. Let me just Actually, I'll just get this one out of the way. There we are. File new and blank file. And let's just bring this up in size so it's easier to see. And zoom in a couple of spots. There we go. That'll work. I'll move it out of the way if we need to see things that are in behind it. Now we'll start off with giving this a fill. Your default color is going to be black as your foreground so you shouldn't really need to change this. If you do then just change your foreground color to black. Actually mine needs changing as well so let's just take a look at that. Color swatches and black. There we go. And do that filled again. So there's the background. Let's now switch over to our type tool. And again we'll be using Playbill regular right there. You want just the standard type horizontal tool. And I have it set at 72 point. We'll adjust the size once you place it on the page. And set your color for white. It doesn't really matter what the color is as long as it's easy to see on the background. So of course black background, white text is real easy. Let's type in there. I'll just put in wood. There we go. Choose OK to set that in place. Let's now resize this by pulling our corners and sides out to give it a nice large size so we can really see what we're doing here. That looks pretty good. Okay, so that gives us our basic text to work with. Now we'll be working with rasterized or simplified text. So the next thing we want to do is to make a copy of this layer. Just drag it with the new layer button right there. makes a copy of that. We can hide the original. That way we can always go back if we want to to change what it says. I always like working on copies of things so I, do, so I have these protections built into the file. Now we need to simplify this layer. So right click where the text is here where the name is and choose simplify. 
And then it's just the basic simplified text, just like that. Now at this point, we can come in and create a special outline, which we'll be using later on. So hold the control key down and click on the thumbnail over here, and that selects all of your text. I'm going to save that selection. I always like to save my selections when I make them, just in case you need to go back to these. I don't always go back to the save selection, but it's it's nice to have it just in case. I'll call that wood one. There we go. Now we're going to modify the selection and contract the selection, make it a little bit smaller. So select, modify, contract, the default is 6 pixels. I think we're going to need a bit more than that. I'm going to try 15 and we'll see how that works. Not quite enough. Let's, let's undo that. We'll try that again. Let's try 20 this time. There we go. I think I can go a little further than that still. I'm going to go a lot higher. I'm going to try 30 on this. I want a good wide bevel edge showing. So let's do contract again. I'll try 30 this time and we'll see how far that comes in. That's pretty good. So what I want is a nice wide area in here along that edge. So a lot of you know nice wide width. And I think that will will do the job. And let's save that selection as well. Save selection let's call this one wood two. And then we can deselect that. Now we're going to be using that selection to fill in to give us the front face of our lettering. There are two ways of doing bevels inside of Photoshop Elements. One is to go up here to Layer and Layer Style, Style Settings, and then do a bevel right here. This is going to automatically give you, as you can see there, a soft edge bevel. You know, it's a fairly soft edge. The other way to do this is to use your effects, bring up the effects here, and apply this bevel. This is a sharp bevel. Let's drag that on. It gives me a sharp edge bevel. We can come in and adjust the thickness of this once you have this bevel in place by going back here to layers, double click on that little FX, brings up the style settings and you can adjust the thickness of your bevel right here. This is the way you get a hard edged bevel inside of the Photoshop Elements program. Now that's not exactly what I want to do and I want to be able to work with the face of this and not just that bevel. So that's why we, we're doing it a little bit differently in this case. So I'm going to undo apply style. So we're not going to be using the effects even though that you can get that hard edge. What I want is to do a soft edge bezel and, and you'll see what that's all about here. So go up to layer, layer style, style settings, bevel, and just a little bit of a soft edge. Now, the reason I'm going for a soft edge is it gives me a little bit of a, a roundness on some of these edges here on these corners and that's going to improve the look of our lettering. Right now it doesn't look good. We still want to have a hard edge in here and that's where that selection comes in that we made previously. Okay, so there is the wood and there's our selection. Everything is good so far. Now we want to put in wood grain into this wood and we can do that very easily by creating a new layer up here and we're going to be creating what's called fibers on that new layer. And I need to fill the layer with something. It doesn't matter what you fill it with. It has to have some kind of content on there. Again, it doesn't matter what it is. So whatever you happen to have on your paint packet, just go ahead and use that to fill that layer. And then actually I'm going to just make, make things nice and consistent here. And let's just change our foreground color to black and fill it with black. Just keep things consistent. Okay, filter, render, and fibers right here. And here you go. Interesting program. You can come in and you can adjust these fibers and get different looks 
by just in the strength of your fibers like that and the variance of your fibers and this is kind of a nice interesting look choose OK and that gives us this fibrous kind of an effect kind of looks like wood grain but it's not there yet we need to now colorize this and give it a wood tone color so I'll go up to enhance and adjust color hue saturation and then click on colorize right there that puts color into the picture we can bring our saturation up or down and we can adjust our hue until we find a nice wood tone I think something in here looks pretty good and if we bring this up we get a lighter wood like that if you bring it down you get a darker wood I want something kind of in here somewhere notice how more saturation is more of a, a redwood look less saturation more of an oak kind of a look I want just a little bit of red in there like that and I think that's kind of a nice color there choose OK so what we have now is this layer sitting above the wood we're now going to convert this to a clipping mask so right click on the layer again where the name is create clipping mask and that puts that wood tone into our lettering just like that just that easy so we're we're part way there we already have a wood looks it looks like a nice wood it's kind of a you know a soft sanded wood but I want to have more of a hard front edge on that so we're going to do the kind of the same thing here and we're going to come in and do a new layer like that on this new layer let's load our selection select load selection I want to have the wood too right there we need to fill this with something actually now that I'm looking at this I think my selection is a little bit off on this side so I'm going to redo that that was 30 so let's just deselect I'm gonna make a new selection on that we'll bring back our selection one load selection wood one and let's contract this by 25 I think maybe a little bit closer to what I want now I can see a little better here with that wood grain on there that's better so 25 that's a nice setting we need to fill this selection with something it doesn't matter what it is I'll just use whatever I have on the front here which is that black color and I'll fill that with the black and then deselect so you can see already that gives us our hard edge that we want. We have the soft gradient in the background giving us our nice gradient and then the hard edge created by this selection and the fill. Okay, grab this layer. This is the layer one. That's our wood grain layer. And drag it up here to the new layer button and pull that above wood and we'll do the exact same thing we're going to make a clipping mask of this and place this inside of that so right click clipping mask and it puts that inside and you can see we now have a hard edge on that wood so we have our nice soft edge for the back area and then a hard edge up here now make it look a little more interesting let's rotate this a bit so I'll go up to image transform free transform and if you come just outside so we can see that notice I got that kind of double arrow thing I can now take that and rotate that wood layer around and you can pull that wood layer around like that until I get it looking just the way I want having a bit of a slant on that wood just improves the look okay choose OK on that so there's that wood grain so we're getting close but I still want to have some additional reflections. I want to have a little bit of a reflection in here and over here, some kind of highlights and highlights down here and down here. We'll do those on another layer. So let's make a new layer in here, just like that. I want to have this layer in front of my bottom text layer and put it above this wood layer here so right there 
So it, anything we do here is going to be applied to that background. It's not going to be shown on this foreground piece of our wood lettering. But I want to contain what I'm doing in here inside of the wood chips. We'll be using our wood text selection again. But first, let's just set our paintbrush up. We'll be using the paintbrush. And I want to have white as my foreground color. So we'll just go to Window here, Color Swatches, and choose white. There we go. And a paintbrush about that size is OK. You can go larger if you want to. Once you see how this is done, it's up to you. OK, so we have our white. Let's now bring back our selection. So select, load selection, come back down here to wood one. That was our first one. And that selects the lettering clear outside. Now I can use my white and come in here and just kind of tap in here and put in some additional highlights on my lettering. Notice how that makes those hard edges really stand out. And I'll give just, which I don't like that one that much. Let me undo that. Sometimes they look good, sometimes they don't. There we go. And let me try one right over there. Maybe a bit too bright on that. I think I'll take those out. But you see how this gives us a real nice kind of sheen now on our lettering. Now the reason it's, it's applied just in those spots is that the selection is keeping it contained inside of the selection and then our wood in front is blocking it in behind there. So if I hide that wood in front You'll see how it actually is, is going quite a ways into the lettering here. We're just hiding that with that new front wood section. And you can also see what I'm doing here. The lighting is from the upper left-hand side. That's the lighting that we had from the bevel and emboss. And then I'm doing the opposite lighting for our specular highlights. Maybe just a little bit right in there and right there kind of bring up those two corners. Okay, let's just get rid of our selection, deselect, and there we go. There's our real nice carved wood look. Again, by doing some of these you know, additional layers and putting that additional piece in there, it allows us to take this much further than you would normally think possible inside of the Elements program. Now you can go further still and here's our highlights. I'm going to rename this one highlights so you don't get lost on that one. You can do different things with this highlights layer. You can bring the opacity down a little bit. If they're too bright, you can just kind of you know fade that out a bit there. Or you can even use your blending modes over here. I'll just use my my wheel on the mouse, and as I roll down through these blending modes. So you see it a couple of them give you interesting looks. Here's an overlay look. You get a bit of color showing up in there. Here's a soft light, a little more subtle. So you can do either of those too if you want to do a slight adjustment. I think I'll bring the amount down just a bit, about 80%. So we, it blends it in just a little bit better. But there you go. That's how to do this carved wood look inside of Photoshop Elements. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.